Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, um, we're going to be discussing a topic, um, two topics actually, on physical chemistry, which include uh, state of matter and chemical energetics. So question two, part A. Well, question two was actually a requested question. So part A talks about the state of matter. Well, actually, no, it talks about chemical energetics, so enthalpy change. So let's honestly just move along. So dinitrogen tetraoxide and nitrogen dioxide exist in a dynamic equilibrium with each other. We have the equation here and the double arrow to show that, uh, you know, um, the reaction moves forward and backwards. And here you notice that there's a positive sign. So that means it's an endothermic reaction. So it needs energy. Uh, it needs to absorb energy in order for the forward reaction to um, occur. So this is the energy profile for this reaction. And okay, so we were asked to label the arrows to the energy profile to indicate the enthalpy change of the reaction. In this case, this is the energy difference, right? And what we're going to see here is that the arrow is facing upwards. That's because we're gaining energy. So you see the product is above the reactant, so we're gaining energy. If it was the opposite way, so if the reactants were above the products, then the arrow would be facing down because we'll be losing energy. Okay, now the activation energy of the forward reaction. So this is the energy that's needed to start the reaction. It's it what gets, or you can say basically it gets the ball rolling. So I'm sorry, I'm just gonna turn off my phone. It's being really loud. Okay, anyways, so this would be the activation energy. Of course, the arrow will be facing upwards because well, you're gaining energy in order for this reaction to occur or to happen, right? So it's going to start from the bottom, go all the way to the top. You have to reach that top area in order for, you know, the full reaction to go through. Because imagine rolling a ball upwards. It won't make it to the top unless you give it enough energy to reach the top, and then it can go down and give you the products, okay? So part B, which is the state of matters part. So we have 0 0.0500 moles of uh, dinitrogen tetraoxide, all right, and that was placed in a sealed vessel of volume one decimeter cubed at a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 1.68 times 10 to the power of 5 pascal. The mass of the resulting equilibrium mixture was 4.606 grams. Okay, so we're asked to find the average molecular mass of the resulting equilibrium mixture, and we're asked to give it to three significant figures. So, when we're dealing with these type of questions, first we want to highlight anything that's important. And you notice that I circled these because they're not in the unit that we are asked to use. So here it's in this degree Celsius, but we need it in Kelvin. And here it's in Pascal, but we need it in uh, kilopascal. So we're going to convert these. All you have to do is multiply this by 1000. So 1.68 times 10 to the power of 5 will become 1.68 times 10 to the power of 8. And then the 50 degrees Celsius, all you have to do is add 273 or 273.15. I'm not sure um, to how many significant figures they've given it to you guys, but uh, this should be fine as I believe that's what's shown in the marking scheme. Okay, so we have this formula that you are supposed to know. Uh, PV is equal to NRT, so pressure times volume should equal to the number of moles times the gas constant times temperature in Kelvin. Now, we want to make moles the subject of the formula, so we're going to divide both sides of the equation by R um, times T. So just uh, if you divide this by RT, it's going to cancel out and then divide this by RT, so you have moles. Um, we have N, so here's just the way to solve it. Well, we need average molecular mass, and in order to get that, you notice that the average molecular mass is equal to the mass over the number of moles. So basically, MR is given in grams per mole. Mass is, the unit of mass is grams. The unit of, well, moles is moles, so grams per mole. So all we have to do now is make, well, you notice that N is equal to M over MR. So we'll just place that here. So if N is equal to this, and it's also equal to M over MR, then we can equate these two together. And we have to try to make MR now the subject of the formula. So what you're going to do is take this M divide it by this entire thing. Or you can do it the longer way, move MR here, 
okay, gives you times mr, and then move this to the side so it becomes m divided by pv over rt. So when you're moving from one side of the equation to the other, you're always doing the opposite operation. So if you multiply it here, you're going to divide on the other side. If you have a positive sign, then you're going to have a negative sign on the other side and so on. So now we have mr. So mr is equal to m rt over pv. Oops. Okay, so all you have to do now is substitute the values. So we have the mass, which is 4.606 grams, times the equilibrium constant, which is 8.31, times the temperature, which we said is 50 plus 273, and then the pressure is 1.68 times 10 to the power of 8, and then the volume is 1 decimeter cubed, so just times 1. And if you place that into your calculator, you'll end up getting 73.6 grams per mole, and that's it. Okay, so the number of moles of nitrogen dinitrogen tetraoxide that dis dissociated can be represented by n, okay? So n is just the number of moles. Say in terms of n, the amount of moles of uh, nitrogen dioxide in the equilibrium mixture. So if you go up, you'd notice that one mole of uh, dinitrogen tetraoxide will result in two moles of nitrogen oxide. The one is never really drawn out or shown, but you assume that it's a one, okay? So if that's n moles, so that means it's double. So nitrogen oxide has double the amount of moles of um, dinitrogen tetraoxide. So it's a one to two ratio. So instead of one, we're gonna substitute the value or the variable n. And instead of two, we're going to, to place the variable two n. So the number of moles of nitrogen dioxide in terms of n would be two n. Now, the number of moles of dinitrogen tetraoxide remaining at equilibrium is 0 0.05 minus n, okay? State in terms of n, the total amount in moles of gas in the equilibrium mixture. We want, in terms of n, the total amount in moles, okay? So what's left? It's going to be the dinitrogen tetraoxide that's remaining plus the nitrogen um, oxide dioxide that's formed I messed up here, I missed a two. Okay, just place that right there. Which will give you the total amount of gas in moles in the equilibrium mix mixture, right? So what's remaining they gave us is 0 0.05 minus n, and what was formed is, well, we don't know, but it's 2n, right? That's what we found before. So how much is of, how many moles of NO2 in the equilibrium mixture? So we add these two together and it should give us the total amount of gas in moles. So 0 0.05 minus n plus 2n is going to be 0 0.05 plus n because 2 minus 2n minus n is just n. So say in terms of n, the mole fraction of NO2 in the equilibrium mixture. So that would mean amount of nitrogen dioxide in the equilibrium mixture divided by the total. We already found the total, right? And if we're asked to find the percentage, all you have to do is multiply by 100. So for example, uh, in a test, we do this all the time. So we say you got 15 out of 16. So 15 is your mark and the total is 16. Try to find the percentage, you multiply by 100. But they didn't ask us for the percentage in this case. They've asked for the mole fraction or just the fraction, basically. So no multiplying by 100. Now substitute those two values. We have the amount, which is 2n, and then we have the total here. So this is your final answer. Okay, so let's move on. In this equilibrium mixture, the mole fraction of nitrogen dioxide is 0 0.400. So this is equal to 0 0.400. Now use your answers to II and IV to calculate the amount in moles of each gas in the equilibrium mixture. Give your answer to three significant figures. So all I'm going to do now is make n the subjects of the formula. So we're going to move this to this side. Since it was division, we're going to multiply. So if you multiply this side by 0 0.05 plus n, it's going to cancel out. Multiply it here by 0 0.05 plus n. There you go. I'm going to expand now. So 0 0.4 times 0 0.05 will give you 0 0.02. 0 0.4 times n is just 0 0.400 n. Then we're going to move this to the other side. It becomes 2n minus 0 0.400 n, which gives you 1.6 n. Divide both sides by 1.6, it will give you 0 0.0125. So that's n. But the thing is, we're told that um, N2O4 in the equilibrium mixture is 
0, 0.5 minus n, right? It was told right here. That's what's remaining. And they're asking us um, to calculate the amount in moles of each gas in the equilibrium mixture, right? So 0 0.05 minus n, which is 0 0.0125, will give you 0 0.0375 moles. And then NO2, we told us, is 2n. So 2 times 0 0.0125 is 0 0.0250, okay? And then write the expression for the equilibrium constant for this equilibrium. So all you're going to do is place the product over the reactants, take the coefficient, and place it as the power. So in this case, the coefficient of dinitrogen tetraoxide was 1, and we never actually write the 1. And here it's nitrogen um, dioxide, and the coefficient was 2. If you go back up, coefficient was 2. So it's going to be raised to the second power. Okay? So this is the partial pressure of nitrogen dioxide squared and the partial pressure of dinitrogen tetraoxide. Now use the total pressure of the mixture, 1.68 times 10 to the power of 5 pascal, to calculate the value of the equilibrium constant Kp and give its unit. So we're given the total pressure. So in this case, 0 0.4 out of this will give you the pressure of nitrogen dioxide. It's the same as saying 40% of this pressure is the pressure of nitrogen dioxide. Why? Because we were never told to find the um, percentage, but if you were thinking of it in the form of a percentage, 0 0.4 times 100 is 40%. So 40% of this will give us the value of, or the pressure, the partial pressure of nitrogen dioxide. But they saved us time. Instead of going from percentage back to decimal form, because you can't really multiply it in percentage form, they both have to be in a regular number form, you know? So uh, 0 0.4 or fraction form. So 0 0.4 times 1.68 times 10 to the power of 5, all squared. And what's left? So if 40% of this pressure is nitrogen dioxide gas, then 60% is what's left, right? Out of 100%, 60% is left. So the other 60% is dinitrogen tetraoxide. So that would be 0 0.6. So 0 0.6 times 1.68 times 10 to the power of 5. So place that into your calculator. You'll end up getting 44,800 pascal. You can keep S pascal or kilopascal. It's up to you. But anyways, so that's the answer. But we want to find the units. You notice that this squared, so it's just basically saying 0 0.4 times this twice. So let me just write that out for you. So it's going to be 0 0.4 times 1.68 times 10 to the power of 5 over here. So that's what, I mean, I'm pretty sure you guys know that. That's what it means when you square something, you're just multiplying it by itself um, twice, basically. So if I get rid of that, just as if the 2 isn't there. It's the same thing. So you notice that this is, in Pascal. This has no unit, all right? So this is Pascal, this is Pascal, and this is Pascal. So Pascal times Pascal. This Pascal will cancel out this bottom one. So what do we have left? We only have one. So the unit is Pascal. It's not Pascal squared because, well, that PA is gone. So that's your unit, and that's how you'd find it. And you can use this method, of course, for anything. And that's how actually, that's what we used in order to find what n is equal to, or mr. We found, we said that molecular mass is grams per mole. So we know that mass is in grams and well, n is moles. So that's how we ended up figuring out without actually having to memorize any specific formula. Just using um, common knowledge would help you to figure things out without the need of really memorizing anything. But anyways, that's basically it. Um, I hope you guys found this helpful. And if you have any other questions or requests, let me know. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.